Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Sour Libations and Conversations. This is a special investigative report that we are doing and I brought in my boo Naya because we have been obsessed with Astro World and everything that has happened to it falling apart. Um, so I want to welcome you to the show, Naya. And how are you this week? I'm great. Like the viewers, the listeners can address me as a messy bitch who live for drama. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm wearing my robe with my, my rose tea so it can bring me <laughs> some love and some dick. And we are here with the mess. I... <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not here with the mess, but let me not lie. I am here with the mess. And that's okay. The you know, mess, 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 mess. Okay. We, yeah. Keeping it cute and classy. Um, we are now a week removed from the Astro World debacle that has taken place about a week ago in Houston, Texas. And I would love to discuss everything that we have stumbled upon, things that fans are saying, videos that are still getting released and bodies that are still, I almost said hitting the floor, but that's not the correct term, um, that are perishing. Um, and so- Why is this any good? I think, I think the first video I saw was in that crowd and it's just people hanging on the side of the barriers as uh, Drake and Travis are performing. And I just kind of wanted- out of this. You know, y'all going to stop playing and act like that nigga didn't see that same Amberlam that was <laughs> that was out there in that crowd. So th that's what I'm saying. Like, what at what point are we going to start holding not just venues, but these artists accountable for our safety? And first of all, I'm going I'm to say this loud and clear. I don't believe that anybody should be at any type of festival that is under the age of 21. So, Naya, you froze. Hello? Naya? Shit, Naya done froze, y'all. Okay. Um, I don't believe that anyone should be at a festival under the age of 21, of that caliber at least, unless it is, hold on. Okay. Yeah, my bad. It's, a, it's still going. Cool. Okay. So I'm a. It's the. It's. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I. I if it's any sugar daddies out there, I need a new MacBook Pro Touch. <laughs> DM me at Naya Fuentes. Let's make you do what it do. Well, now you're clear and beautiful. Skin all glowing, lips all shining. <laughs> okay, so wait, where were we? I was saying, I don't believe that a kid should have been at that festival, at any festival like that of that caliber. I feel like people should be legal. Like, and when I mean legal, I mean like 21, 
for somebody to try to take that sound bite and be funny. Uh, what's wrong? That's what you believe? Yeah, that they should be 21 and older to go to the festival. Girl, I was at the Millennium Tour at nine years old. Fuck That's you different. That's, hold on. Mm-hmm. Wait a second. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I was going to mm-hmm. concerts as well. I was going to see Immature by myself. At, and like, you was by yourself? Yeah, going to see Immature. My mom would drive me and my big sister off. But what I mean by that is... Your, your little young ass shouldn't have been there. That's how motherfuckers get um, R. Kelly down here. Anyway... <laughs> Them niggas, I mean, you know what? Never mind, because Marcus Houston is a little creepy. Um, yeah, yeah. No, Chris but what Stokes. I mean in that sense, but but I mean from that that caliber, like that big of a, a venue, the stuff that he be talking about. Immature albums was not parental advisory, neither was B2K. Yes, girl. They, let's go back. B2K, B2K was, years. B2K ended up getting to bump, that bump, level. Bump, bump, bump. And Diddy was on the song. And we know he Bump, knows. bump, bump. But all they were saying was nigga. That's it. Girl, they was talking, the song is uh, talking about fucking. I know what it's talking about, but I'm saying, even if it didn't have no cuss words, I still feel like that was a safer space to be in. We know the caliber of people and the people that like outside of at least my experience with Travis Scott has always been an adult setting. It's never been any kids around. It's always been like a club or something. Knew of. I mean, yeah, that I knew of. If it was in the ring, but I mean, like a nine a nine year old just died. I think that is crazy. A fourteen, but that's not on the parents. I'm not pushing it back if on my the kid, If my kid, oh, I'm not pushing kid, it back on the parents. If my kid like this nigga, if my kid can go, shit, I'm gonna take my kid to see this nigga. I'm just saying, that and you know, I, most of his fan base is actually children I see under people 21. Be saying that, and I just don't. The people that I've seen mm-hmm. and that I've interacted with in these spaces, it don't be kids. I mean, oh, yeah, so because wait, that's your experience. But I have younger nieces and nephews that definitely listen to that shit. Strange. I don't know if I would let my kid listen to Travis Scott. And I'm pretty sure it was some mamas out there talking about, I don't think I let my kid listen to Bump, Bump, Bump. Because it was definitely grown-ass bitches at Bump, Bump, Bump. Why it was my nine-year-old ass at Bump, Bump, Bump. And we both singing Bump, Bump, Bump. But guess who was Bump, Bump, Bumping? Us. All of us. Everybody, you was you was bum bum bumping when bum 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 came out. I mean, not having sex, but I'm saying we was at the concert. I was like, you was fucking at nine years old. Now you're no, we, we was at the all... concert getting 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 wet. Bump bump bump. Now yeah, I be forgetting that you're so much younger than me, and it's not yeah, so much I'm younger saying, than me. But I'm like, no. My older cousin had to take us because she was she was 15 when I was born, so it was like she was kind of a mama figure, but not necessarily no mama right. figure because. She was like the cool cousin. So she took us, and we were all definitely like eight, nine, and ten years old. I, it was I guess super- my mama just, I, I don't know. Like, I'm telling you for a fact, like my mom dropped us off at the Fox to see Immature. Yeah, but okay. So you four years older than me. So I'm like, y'all shouldn't have been dropped off. I'm finna call we my went to the We went to the P- Puff Daddy. Because he was I Puff Daddy it was then. Safe Serena. We or, yeah we went I went to the No Way Out tour in ninety seven. We went by ourselves. I know the year. I know I know the year. I remember when that album. Your mama right. should have been locked up. Oh, we got in trouble from going to see Puffy because she said that we was too young to be going to see Puffy at that age. So that's I'm thinking of, of the context of that, and then on top of, go ahead. You know, I was supposed to go see Janet Jackson at 12 years old. I've always been a big Janet Jackson fan. Always. My cousin, the same hip-ass cousin that took me to see, she snipped, because my parents was going to let me go, because they ain't wasn't hip to what Janet was doing. Shit, I wasn't hip to what Janet was doing either at the show. Really? Nah, because, you know, my, my parents is old as a motherfucker. So, they wasn't hip to what she was doing at the show. So, my cousin snitch ass, she was talking about her. Oh, they get in the trash. I'm like, who's that coming in my Caucasian home? Um, her snitch ass talking about, you know, Janet be doing erotic stuff on stage and da 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 da. 
I'm like, bitch, ain't nobody asked you dusty ass. I still don't my like that took, this day. Oh my god, my dad took us to see Janet Jackson though. See, y'all, y'all parents should have been in jail. That's crazy. Our parents <laughs> shouldn't have been in jail. Like we had a good time. Like we. But it's you also, can't but, drop no thirteen year old off nowhere no more. You can't drop them off in but, St. Louis. You can't drop them off in the mall. You can't drop them off in the loop. You can't drop them off nowhere. You got to be motherfucking eighteen or older to get dropped off any fucking where in this ratchet ass city. So okay, so exactly. So Houston, see now, now you done spent the block on my statement, and now he was that's with a his child. I, I mean, I, he was with his dad. I get that, but I just think that in certain spaces, one that kids should not be in a Travis Scott concert is one of them. I'm not saying, oh, it's the parent, the parent fault that they should have died. No, this is absolutely the venues and Travis Five Scott's yeah. uh, fault that this happened because that video that dropped yesterday at nine o'clock in the morning when the um, merchandise line opened up and you saw how people was acting, I told you, I said, why didn't they call in the SWAT team? Okay, so maybe not the SWATs, but the National Guard. <laughs> so like, help that shit, because that, that told you right there what shit was about to be. And how you can hear the people that was working the stands, like freaking I out left. low key. I would have left. I, I would have left. left like that one dude, the, the, the uh, security guard that left and was like, Oh hell no! He was on there playing, talking about. <laughs> that nigga said when he said noodles in a spaghetti bowl, I it just was like lost noodles. It. Like, bro, what? <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was for me. I just am like, I feel like we keep seeing stuff that gets worse and worse, and I think that Travis Scott also made it worse. It took him like two days to even say anything. Say anything. And then we find out. Then he was like. <gasps> Yeah, rubbing the head. It was just like he was coming down from some sort of high. Um, and, and I also feel like now that we found out that he went to Dave and Buster's <laughs> after this right. shit. So you're going to tell me that nobody told you exactly that niggas died. Niggas is in the hospital. And you just finna go play some video games, uh, Mario Kart and shit. That's weird as fuck to me. Yeah. And not only that, a lot of people see, this why I don't like when motherfuckers, when niggas get a hold of shit, because niggas be like, you know, niggas gonna nigger it up. So, niggas we are going to do that. For, <laughs> niggas are is stepping for Travis Scott because they think it's like on some racial injustice shit. Cool. Right. That's initially what you're supposed to do, but when you get the facts, bitch, sit that ass down. A lot of people are saying, well, they should have knew because they should have knew that's what comes with going to a Travis Scott show. Bitch, I ain't expecting to die at nobody's show. I am expecting to leave a Travis Scott show with my bald head ass in oh, an afro. That's it. Yes. That's it. That's, that's it. it. I've been to a Travis Scott show. Yes. I done bought merch. I done bought food. I can't, my white ass came out just Fine. I would not expect that as returning as a more seasoned white woman that that would happen. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the thing. I'm just like, it's interesting because people are trying to say, oh, it was this, it was that. And I'm just like, or how about people can just be that selfish and have that individualistic like mentality because for me Roddy Rich and everybody else speaking up and saying something first before this nigga even acknowledged it and he was his shit that lets you know how and you his know mind... niggas was dying it was your show of course motherfuckers yeah. told you like yeah niggas is dead like I'm just gonna go to Dave and Buster's get some hot wings play a race car game what That's you think the... he ordered like what you think he did there cause who the fuck even go to Dave and Buster's anyways we just got Dave and Buster's out here, like at least at Hollywood and Highland, like not too long ago. So it's been like oh, a couple years. Um, but people go and they have a great time. But I just think that I said what he ordered. He ordered them hot wings. Some hot wings is fire. 
Um, I don't know. I don't eat food third. But I, I just like going. I just I think for me it's just like the disconnect. It's just like I feel like there's no sense of ownership. Is no really real apology. The fact that uh, you know headlines are Kylie Jenner is unharmed. Um, and then you got her speaking out. You got Kim speaking out. And I'm like, y'all shouldn't even be the motherfucker saying shit at all. Why are y'all the ones speaking up when it's this nigga? First fault? off, Kimberly wasn't even there. Her black ass shouldn't say her shit. Wait, no, uh, we're not going to do that. That <laughs> Caucasian ass woman. Kimberly black ass shouldn't say a motherfucker. Kimberly thing. white ass, Armenian ass. <laughs> I knew that was gonna see you, but okay. So let's get into let's get into some of this conspiracy shit. So yes, okay. So when I heard about the story, I was coming off a flight. I was coming off of a flight. I had just landed in LA, and I started like everybody was DM me because they know I'm a mess bitch. They live for drama. Everybody was DM me all this shit. So when I'm coming off the plane, I'm like, oh, my DMs jumping. I'm finna get some money. It was Travis Scott ugly ass. So. I'm looking through the shit and I'm like seeing that boy talk about the concert and hit girl stomach was like bubbling mm -hmm. and I had mm -hmm. just got off the flight. So, you know, sometimes you look lightheaded cause you didn't just woke up. I feel a little nap. And when I started digging deeper, that the shit started being real, real sick. The t-shirt, yeah. the shit about the t-shirt and the portal where motherfuckers was turning from blue to red. Yep, and it looked like motherfucking port on her. Then the shit, the damn stage had a motherfucking portal. Then yep. it had the little eight flames for the eight people that died. And not to mention, y'all motherfuckers think we stupid. We know more than eight people died that night. That's how I feel. I feel like more than eight people died. I think that they were trying to use that eight as a symbolism because eight is a powerful number in numerology. And they were putting that out into the universe for what? I don't know. But that shit sick because when we watched the video of that man talking about some they was going to body to body and niggas was turning blue and they was trying to resuscitate them and then it was just body stacking on top of bodies it couldn't have just been eight people that died that's how i feel well now know. it the toll is 10 I, I 10 believe. now it's 10 yeah, it's 10 that was yeah. 10 motherfucking lie because if security and people bystanders and shit talking about they done fell down in the bodies and it was it was two layers bodies deep. Yeah, that sound like a motherfucking horror movie. Yeah, you know, that boy said he trip, said he said he felt like he was literally in hell. When a bitch trip in a horror movie and then it be like bodies laying under her, that's what I mm -hmm. felt like. Ooh, mortified, right? Then when you start digging deeper. It seems like a motherfucking scam for some money. Remember that shit I sent you? Um, where the the uh therapist, yep, the yep. the better something dot com, the better help, and they had reached and they got a whole thing going now. And then better help had also reached out because I think I sent you the video from Diet Prada, the dude that ended up speaking out about it because mm -hmm. he was like saying how. One, they hardly pay their um, therapist anything. Then they wanted to pay him all this money to link his business with their business. Uh, anytime he was sending referrals. referrals. And then he was saying that now that it's a code. So now homeboy get a kickback from that. And he was saying that they was going to get him this little therapist that nobody fucking know at mm -hmm. least $300 for everybody that clicked. His link. His link. How much y'all yep. think he, they giving Travis Scott? Exactly. He probably got a got a contract for millions. Yep. Him and Kylie, ugly ass, <laughs> thin lip ass, trying to be black <laughs> like him. <laughs> Girl, the dog. The Girl, dog why, why, calm down. We uh, talk about some weed. So she don't need no more weed. <laughs> uh. I'm I just serious. don't like it. I don't like it. That motherfucker, he looks slow. So he looked too slow to have orchestrated all of this on his own. What the fuck is that, bitch? So the picture up top is the entrance to Astro World. Yeah. The photo below 
is called. Send me that. Screenshot that for okay. me. Okay. I thought I sent it to you. I'm sorry. Um, called a har harrowing or harrowing of hell. And it's just pretty much, it says the, uh, the picture um, above is the most recent festival where attendees said it felt like they were in hell and eight people died. Read Isaiah oh, 5, 14 yeah. and 1, uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1. And the person was just like, this ain't cap, the entertainment industry been like this, but y'all opening y'all mm -hmm. eyes now. Um, hey, for real. I, I I've heard interesting stories and conspiracies about the industry and a whole bunch of shit that be going on around us. Girl, but you in it, LA, you should know a lot. Girl, you see my ass be at home. I'll be asleep. No, it's very, very weird. Okay, so my ex fiance, he does production. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's out in LA. So I had seen him earlier this year. Um, and he was kind of telling me, like, we was just catching up, and he was kind of telling me, like, all the new projects, but he was like, nah, for real, he was like, a lot of that shit that they be, like, conspiracies, he was like, that shit ain't no joke, that shit ain't no game, niggas be weird, like, niggas be yeah. weird, and he was like, everybody fucking everybody, he was like, motherfuckers is weird as fuck, he was like, that thing that, he was like, you know, that Dave Chappelle was talking about, like, he wouldn't put on a dress to go to, to, you know, like they be making black men put on dresses and wigs and stuff. He was like, "No, that shit is real." Um, the Twain brothers are like that. They don't. They don't. They won't do it um, because they feel like they can. They are funny without having to be. You know, be in drag, and they. You know, and they're very vocal about that as well. Um, but what I was gonna say was my homeboy. Uh, when we talk about like money grabs and whatever, because I was having. We were talking about it over dinner, and my my friend was saying that pretty much he felt like Travis Scott was, as far as touring, at least for a, a minute, is toast because nobody gonna want to insure his shows. Yeah, look, my homegirl worked for Uber. He they had like started because she worked in marketing. They were starting doing a deal with him. That's over week. I think it'll be over for a second, but it'll be over for a while. They're gonna be back. Yeah, but Patrick, um, my homeboy Patrick made a a statement saying pretty much that he think that he was set up. He think that Travis Travis Scott was potentially set up, and I and he said pretty much Travis Scott everything that Travis Scott does is independently owned and operated. He don't use like a lot of big businesses. He don't partner with people when it comes to his shows like that at all. And so it forces him now to have to do deals and business with a whole bunch of other people that was never in the mix because he was cutting people out. And My I was thing like, is, is, first off, you were very irresponsible. You had, yeah. okay, so look, irresponsible Let's take the conspiracy. Let's take the, the the devil worship and all that shit out. Yeah. You and your team yep. had a meeting with Houston PD prior and Live Nation. Yep. And whoever else is on that motherfucking thing that y'all say the two names was on the motherfucker. I ain't get to read it because they kept on blocking out the names. But y'all met with Houston PD. Houston PD said they already have concerns about this type of shit. Yep. going on um because they they feel like it was understaffed um and y'all let them know that they ain't have nothing to worry about mhm mm cuz it was sold out at 50,000 they capped it at 50,000 his and whole ass so yo ass went on twitter and told motherfuckers to jump the gates yep. of a sold out show that already had concerns for um security and security like people that people just don't understand like security is just not for like if like violence people yeah, yeah people fight motherfuckers yeah yeah, yes, yeah it's not just for that it's also for like public safety yes yes and also y'all was understaffed for medical as well which does Heavily not make under, sense they're at, really understaffed. at a festival Exactly. Y'all were understaffed that Houston PD said they had to 
um, deployed 50 units of medical on site. And that still wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Because we see like massive people hurt or dead. Now, also, before niggas get to nigger ran saying, well, this happens at white people shows. Actually, it doesn't. It don't. It don't. The last time that somebody actually died at a concert or festival in the U.S., it was in the 60s. Yep. Rolling Stones. So this is this is pretty unheard of. I think 67. I don't know. But it was my it was in my parents era and when none of us thought of. So <laughs> y'all motherfuckers can go on, on with all that bullshit. And, and that's and and that's my issue. And I but don't I, put Drake I, in it because that ain't none of his business. He he ain't meet with Houston PD. Drake ain't meet, meet with Houston PD girl, and it wasn't his motherfucking show. So y'all better been, not sue my baby dad. Drake has been named in several of the lawsuits. I'm pretty sure he will be acquitted and nothing will come of those as far as he is concerned. Uh, <laughs> but no, but, but people kept talking about, look at what happened to Michael Jackson. I said, but you know where Michael Jackson Ain't was? Ain't nobody died. One, nobody died. It was in a venue where they knew how many people were coming through and it was heavily ha- full of what? Security. Security, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and medical, all of that. So they were able to pull people out of crowds. The other thing that's bizarre to me is... And them niggas was just famous. They weren't and they was just on famous. motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then to know, to see video of people being, or getting, being on the stage at this concert at Astroworld. Then niggas Tell dying. Them, people, it's stop the show, stop the show. And the camera guy's like, What? Oh, I'm just gonna keep working because you I'm, hear I'm, people chanting you, in the yes. crowd, "Stop the show!" The show, yes, Stop the show, and, and you your still ass up there shaking them little plaques on on them drugs. Steady shaking them little plaques. What the fuck you was doing? Raging, allowing his fans to, you know, to die. Not and giving a fuck, what, but individualism. That's what I mean. Like people, people like are saying all this stuff. I said. I'm telling y'all, y'all see, y'all making up all this stuff. It's niggas that's out here that just don't give a fuck about other people. And he could, he's one the of those crowd people. control is a real thing. Yeah. As a, as a performer, as an entertainment crowd, that's the first thing you learn when you're presenting yourself on the stage. Shit, I ain't even no motherfucking expert entertainer, nothing. And I understand about crowd control. Crowd control is so powerful. You can be like, hold on, bro. Motherfuckers stop that show and be like, hold on, bro. I'm going to need this side to say, hey, and I'm going to need this side to say, ho. Yep. That's crowd control. Or yep. you can do crowd control like, hey, I'm going to stop the show and everybody take two steps back. Yep. We got it too full at the front. We need to make sure everybody's safe up here. Everybody Nigga, take two steps back. When Selena did that free show, didn't know Girl, all my died. cousins was up in there. Clicking they motherfucking heels in them boots, bitch. And ain't nobody died. Nobody died. What's Selena's? Everybody yes, made it home Sel- just fine. Yes. And so that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I feel like just on videos that are surfacing, even some, some shit that he did, like the one I showed you where somebody called him ASAP Rocky. And he jumped <laughs> at the dude. Yeah, bitch. And, yeah, and I'm just like. What is wrong with you? They say this. They say the man got Asperger's. So I don't know. I but mean, it makes sense. That, but what is that? That more? might take it, get him out of paying all them people though. Just keep on acting retarded. I mean, I, I'm not gonna say that he got Asperger's. I'm gonna say he got more like bipolarism. I don't know about all that. Just giving him too much credit. All right, cool. I, I, that's just how I feel. I just, to me, just what we see him do, how he, I mean, might how be. How see him interact with people, it do give like, oh, uh, he don't have good people skills. Like, yeah, yeah. That's probably, yeah, that's, he probably yeah. has Asperger's for real. Or he just a loser. Just be lying. Now, every loser I know got Asperger's. So let me talk about <laughs> it. But... <laughs> So <laughs> that motherfuckers talks. Well, we're gonna yeah. talk about somebody that's on the rise. And you just, you just, back, 
got us got us thinking about a nigga we ain't never dated before that and broke our heart already. Miss Summer, Walker. fuck these niggas, Walker. That's so. How do you like the album, girl? Um, what got you in the choco? What what songs got you in the choco? Uh, every morning I get up and I play No Love. Not every morning, bitch. Every morning. You gotta let that hurt every... go. <laughs> what hurt? It's just a vibe. So, you know what? Okay, so when I think about her last body of work, Over It, my favorite song on the entire album is uh, Body. Okay. The second track on that album. And then I'll skip ahead to I Like It With Her in Black. Those are my favorite songs between, between uh, that and then the song with uh, Janae, where they talking about possibly killing the nigga, but you I know, it just, I like that. But I love this album so much because, I mean, I don't really relate to it, but I can really feel. I think what makes stop, it really good is that you can re- on, stop lying on Beyonce. No, the internet. no, I, but I think what makes it a really great album is you can really feel that pain and that hurt, like in the lyrics and what she's saying and how she's singing it. And I love that. I love um, the joint with her and Ari Lennox. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. That shit, that shit go. And Unloyal. Unloyal. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So those are the main ones that I consistently play over and over. But I just like, I really love SZA. I just really, really, really love SZA. And that's why I'm really mad at fucking Travis Scott because... I have I play Love Galore so fucking much. Love Galore is very great. I love yeah, I love that song. I love that. And another beautiful re- body of work. Yes. I I just love SZA and everything that SZA does. And that's why I stay in that fucking song. And shout out to Summer Walker because now she has tied Taylor Swift. For Billboard entry, she currently has 18 songs total that have entered the Billboard charts. And Ari Lennox, this is her first time being in the Hot 100 because of being Come featured on, on Summer Walker track. Yes, yes. So shout out to these bitches. Get into the bag. Fuck these niggas. Put everything in your work and your music, Come as Cardi B says. I love that shit. I really, I really enjoy it. And it's interesting how people are like, "Well, you know, London is still getting paid off of it." I'm like, I don't I give think, a fuck. I, I don't give I, a fuck. This is, this is for me. This yeah. ain't for that bitch. This is for me. And if I gotta be tied into to, to a shitty ass contract right now, this mm-hmm. is cool. But the next one, that's gonna be this. That's all me. Like. She yeah. got to do so much. That's what people don't understand. Like, even Kanye has talked about it. A lot of people have talked about it. They done done so much work just to get out their deal. Like, um, people that people that drop bullshit-ass albums. Hold on. I, I, no, 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 you're fine. Oh. I just made you bigger. <laughs> okay. People that drop bullshit-ass albums, like, back to back to back, the only thing they be doing is trying to get out their contract. Right, so, right. if you fulfill, if you say you got a 11 album contract like somebody said that recently like i think g her boy something somebody said some crazy ass shit and he was like the reason why i was drafting like bullshit ass projects back to back because i gotta get myself out that contract so if this that's what, what the bitch what gotta do, was doing yeah just this is what the bitch gotta do this is this is a beautiful body of work i cannot say that i do not relate bitch every song resonates okay <laughs> and I, I like the storyline because I spoke about this on my story before. Okay, bitter is you riding for a nigga. Mm-hmm. He done told you all this shit about the last bitch, about the bitch before her. And you like, yeah, oh, them bitches lame. Them bitches this. Like, I'm piped up. And then I, I hear Cardi on the track. Like, I'm very much a Cardi ass friend. Like, girl, we ain't about to do all this. We about to shit on these hoes. Fuck it. Right. Then you know you go to reason for X and cause you still sh- trying to shit on the bitch. Now yeah. you like, damn, I'm a little stressed out, bitch. Hold on, hold on. If I had a chance, well, I'm in it too deep. She want to get drunk. I in it too deep. I'm in it too deep. Yep. So 
I don't want to turn away because I done put too much time in it. But if I had a chance to do this shit over again, bitch, I wouldn't do none of this. Yeah. We got to throw it, throw it away because mm -hmm. I'm still feeling the same. Oh, I do like that too. I like that a lot. Reciprocation, like, okay, work with me here. Like, shit, we in this motherfucker. Now I'm like, bitch, I'm looking at this motherfucker like I don't know him and he don't know me. Yeah. Now... We in a motherfucking circle. Like, yeah, yeah! Now the <laughs> nigga got you feeling crazy. Now no. the nigga got you feeling crazy. So you acting, you acting extra crazy. Now after the old crazy stage, when you done came down, like it's just all a whole bunch of bullshit. Then you gotta swap a nigga out. Now, now here come the nigga. Now here come the nigga being nice again, cause you done swapped his ass out. Yeah. Now he, now he acting fake hurt. When he the motherfucker that orchestrated all this, I was like, "Yeah, she just wrote my whole little little story of my life right there." Then it's closure, toxic, shit, screwing, broken promises. Now, now it's time for dissing you, your mama, your lame ass baby mamas, whoever come after. Now I'm trying to be at peace. So let me talk to the Lord real quick because we done did a whole bunch. Of Girl, I just like I said, I don't know. You be I be in spaces uh like why I feel like I really relate to like no love. It's just because you know we air signs. And so we it when you really when you let somebody in and you really fuck with them and they do some fuck shit and you was just like, you know what? No, this is I should have just did this. And when scissors say if I did it all again, I would give like 10%. You deserve like half of that. I'm going to need my money back. On oh, me. And I, and I, I felt that shit. And I was just yeah, like, I, you know what? I done gave a lot of you niggas too fucking much. I want a refund, bitch. I want a refund. Plus interest. Plus and you interest. better have my money. Because I, I, I don't know. And every time she say that, I'm just like, Yes, Sizzle. Preach yes. Queen. Sizzle was snapping. Sizzle was snapping. She was like, yes. just see, see me so you can VV me. V me. All yes. I want is the dick involved. <laughs> yep. No more feelings involved. Yes. And then when she say, when she was like, all I'm trying to see is your credit card, swipe them all over me. I'm like, yeah, bitch. That's what I'm talking about. I don't need no extra shit. This is what it is. This is very transactional. And I'm okay with that. Like, because yeah. all of y'all be playing these games and then you get mad when a bitch be acting crazy, but you done sold us a dollar in a fucking dream. And do we really be acting crazy? No, we don't. Do I, we always, really I keep telling crazy. people, I say, when y'all really think about a thin line between love and hate, that's Martin's fault. Martin made... He, he, was, he was an antagonist. He was an antagonist. He really Ain't that was. the right one? The That's the that right one. Like, protest, the the protagonist is like the hero. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah, that nigga was that nigga was the real motherfucking villain he of was. the motherfucker. It wasn't her. The older I get, the more I figure out that that bitch Brandy went crazy. Yeah. Just like just like in Love and Basketball, Q was the fucking villain. Fuck yeah. all that bullshit. My daddy, blah, 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 no, bitch. You not okay? Y'all are two different people. So you still gonna treat Sina Lathan like a fucking Sydney? Wait, no, she was Sydney in fucking Brown Sugar, my bad. Wrong movie. Uh, whatever the fuck her name was in that movie. But then you get her, and then you still going to try to be with Tyra Banks. And then when you all washed up and wore out like an old raisin, now you don't want to be. I, I don't ever want to be that bitch, like, to be waiting around for a nigga and let him go through all his holes. And then he come back, it's like, baby, it was always you. No, nigga, it was not, because it definitely ain't you. Look, cut this clip right here. I want all my old niggas to know. Cut this clip right here. I told this this, this lying-ass nigga, this new nigga that be in, in and out, I told him, I said, yeah. He was talking about, oh, this girl was so good to me. I said, yeah. I'm, all my old niggas, I don't never want them to like think I was like so good to them I said whenever my old niggas think about me I just want them to think about pain I don't want them to think about nothing good came out of me like damn I hate that bitch 
yeah, I don't want to be the bitch like, she was so good to me and I did this, 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 this and fucked her over all of that shit. I don't want, I don't want to be that bitch. I don't want to be that bitch. I want to be the bitch where you remember like, damn, yeah, I ain't fucking with no bitch like that. I want to be the bitch to break a nigga. The fuck? <laughs> he was like, damn, what the fuck? I said, yeah, that's how I feel. Straight up. Now you what? <laughs> That threw me off. I thought you, cause see, cause I'm the type of bitch that's just like, yo, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a motherfucking experience, and it don't get no better than this. And every other bitch that you date after me is gonna be motherfucking mediocre as fuck. And then your ass gonna be calling, crying, and whining. I understood why you operate. You did this and this and that. Yeah, bitch. Cause I, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, I ain't got time. A nigga know not to call my phone. Don't hit my line about nothing. Because if you call my phone after I'm over you and shit, I'm finna talk about you. I'm finna talk about your bald head ass mama. I'm gonna talk about her teeth. I'm gonna talk about your dead ass daddy that never wanted you. Bitch, you was basically like an orphan at this point. Cause your mom was probably on crack. Like I'm finna, I'm finna go way, way left. You think you coming? Don't come to me. But my motherfucking empathy, bitch. Because when I was crying, you ain't have no empathy for me. Girl, well, no. And that when I was crying, when you was inflicting that pain upon me to make me cry, nigga. No, so, I don't want to cry. No when a motherfucker more. come, do not, do not spin the block, block. Do not slide back thinking it's going to be all good, bitch. The only motherfucker that's all good is probably my baby daddy. And he ain't caused half the pain that, um, that y'all niggas can cause so that's why that nigga good but all she wanna see is your credit cards <laughs> y'all know I like diamonds <laughs> I like nice dinners I like flights trips yes okay Anything for another Airbnb and we just gonna keep it at that very um transactional I'm yeah. very much a Libra I'm very much into nice things okay yeah. it's always something that I want so give me something that's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I hate you? <laughs> no, no, but that is, see, okay, see, you can say that and it'd be fine. And nobody say anything. If I said exactly what the fuck you just said, now everybody would be in my ass and like, oh, you're a gold digger. You're this, you're this. And, and I'm like, no, if I treat myself a certain way and I want certain things for, for myself, I want a nigga to be able to do the same fucking thing because then what the fuck is we doing? Why you think that's so? Because I feel like niggas just pick up on the vibe of how I take care of myself anyways. I also, is I'm going to be honest, I've always been told that I appear kept, whatever the fuck that mean. And that, so broke niggas don't really come my way anyway. I'm not mm. trying to be funny, but I get what you're saying. Yes. I, I yeah, uh, it's a certain, like, I feel like, and it's funny because I had this conversation with the other dog. And he was who like, that? Yeah, who is? <laughs> so, anyways, a raggedy bitch. Anyway, <laughs> so I had the conversation with him, and he was like, Yeah, he was like, I feel like a certain, a certain caliber man is just not going to, um, like approach you anyways but he was like i'm lying like, i was just wanting to make it so like you know even more like men would not approach you but he was like because you have like a certain thing going on you can you know you always be you know iced out or whatever but he was like it's like you need some more jewelry you need some more watches like you need something that people because i do have very classy jewelry and he was like you need something that you know like niggas identify as being turned up and stuff like that and i was like oh yeah i guess so i started like kind of looking at like a little you know what them rappers baby mamas were which is not really my style but i'm like oh yeah i could do that sometime but that's true like people look at those like people look at your shoes look at your car look at your like bags like niggas be looking at my bags more than bitches i had a nigga like damn how much how much that bag costs and I'm like, he was like, a nigga got it for you. I'm like, this is my birthday gift to myself, sir. What? I mean, maybe, maybe a nigga gave it to me indirectly, but okay, okay. Um, maybe in the form of me begging for some like for get my lights paid 
and saying it was behind five months or something like that, like something like that, but not, you know, maybe a couple niggas contributed to this, but not motherfucker just went out to the store and bought it. Like, no, I bought this on my own. And he was like really like into it, like, oh, I could get you this, 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 this. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this information? Am I supposed to just give you head right now? Or what's the what's what's the, what's the vibe about to be like you think i'm just about to net you up right here in the car like right. i don't know like and niggas be still out here getting bitches fake bags yeah like, don't give me nothing fake i don't, don't get me no fake like anything i'm like if you can't afford it that's cool like but don't give me no fake bag don't I'm give me no fake di- i'm gonna get it diamond tested i'm getting it appraised I want my certification, all that. Y'all can't play with me on no damn jewelry now. And y'all definitely can't play me on no designer shit because yeah. I'm going to go get it authenticated. That's what a lot of these bitches don't understand. I, I got to authenticate yeah. her. So. A yes. lot of, I, I just, I just feel like it's, it's still nice stuff out here that don't, that's not like, you know, like these white people and we have like dope black designers that have stuff. That is nice. I mean, and I'm like, if you... Brandon Blackwood. Brandon Blackwood. Don't be always in a, in a scandal when it comes to them bags. I don't have that's no a, issue with my a, Brandon that's Blackwood. A, that's a Libra's lifestyle. So I can't even fault him. I just be like, that's my Libra, homie. I'm finna buy this bag, y'all. It get, it'll get to me when it gets to me. That ain't I just good. got one the other day. Oh, some of their songs are like that. It came, I had it an came attitude. <laughs> yeah, my 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 uh, came pretty quickly, so I didn't have no issues. It was just I don't like that they ship UPS. My shit came UPS, and so I had an issue. Girl, mine don't come UPS, bitch. Mine came UPS. And Maybe because you're you, all the way in LA, but mine. No, them in- bitches didn't leave it. I'm like, this is under a certain price point. You have to. You can leave it at my door, girl. UPS kept saying that they was coming, and they didn't come. I'm sitting at home working from home. And nobody, man, person rang that doorbell or knocked on that door. And then I had to go to some brinky dink like pickup place to go get my fucking bag. And they closed at four o'clock. I get off of work at four. But that's neither here or there. Uh, so, <laughs> so, okay, so we all been in that place. Where we've been distraught over Nick. I was going to ask you something real quick, though, before okay. we segue. Okay. Okay, so we finally got Sierra's prayer. Girl, I don't want that shit. I don't want that shit. Somebody no. better give me um motherfucking um, Jeff Bezos prayer or whatever. I don't want that shit over there. I don't want that lifestyle. Mm-mm. That ain't well, going to work. That's what every bitch asked for. I mean, it, uh, to me, yes, the prayer was very basic. I think, the, what, and it's funny because you see everybody posting and talking about this prayer. And I was like, y'all know in order for this prayer to work that y'all have to do the hardest part, which is leave that nigga alone. And a lot of bitches don't be wanting to leave niggas alone. And they be wondering, like, but God, I asked him. He's like, but yeah, you got to do that work too. Oh, that's a lot. A lot of people, a lot of people stop themselves from winning because Simply, they don't want to do the work. Yeah. Um. I know. Shit. I I've been in situations where people be like, "Oh, you shit." We went to college around, graduated the same year, went to college around the same time. These niggas is still like at the beginning of their career, and I'm going into senior positions, mid level positions, and shit like that. And these motherfuckers talking about, damn. You hella, you hella lucky. You hella bl- no, bitch. I I've been work. working while your ass was shaking ass. Now I was shaking ass, um, and I was out, you know, with y'all at the same time. Right, right. But let's say we we went out, went to the strip club, got home at six in the morning. My ass was at work at seven. Yeah, and you was calling off. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 what happened. Like. It's nothing simple about what the fuck I did. It's not no look. It's not, I mean, it's a blessing that I was able to have all that resilience and shit. But it wasn't by um, just nobody dropped no blessings on my door, bitch. I was doing the work. Yeah. And I think, and, and I, 
That was the main thing I was saying. Like, everybody, I'm going to put this under my pillow. I'm going to do this. I'm like, but is you going to leave that nigga? Is you going to leave that nigga? No, Are you gonna because be Easter? people be codependent. People be codependent. I, I had a friend, right? She she is no longer a friend just based on that she was a weak-ass bitch. Like, I, you ain't going to keep telling me and crying about a nigga. And That's how then, I feel. Then keep on putting yourself at risk, like health risk. You know he fucking other people, and they be mm -hmm. at random. He don't even know the people he fucking, and he fucking them without a condom. So you gonna let this nigga keep on fucking you, and you know it, and I know it, and we know it. No, bitch, leave. She still with the raggy. She look that bitch straight. Then, then you know bitches be priding themselves on doing crazy bitch shit when really it's just giving weird. So that bitch totaled her car because she want to hit his car. And another thing, uh, uh, some shit that put the nail in the coffin because this bitch was this white bitch was saying nigga online. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna take y'all down a little rabbit hole. This white bitch was saying nigga online, and I seen this bitch out. Well, she seen me out because I didn't even know who her jagged teeth ass was. She a hip ass bitch that got two black baby daddies. So she seen me out somewhere at a little Airbnb party and like bumped me with her elbow. So I'm like, who the fuck is this bitch? Like, I ain't even swing on her initially because I'm like, maybe I know her from somewhere and she's just being a little too playful. And then she like tried to book up to me like, oh, yeah, bitch. Like you said, I couldn't say nigga. Da, 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 da. We whipped that bitch ass. Now, the one that is no longer my friend, she steady like she ain't even jump into action, but she was within swinging dis distance and didn't jump into action. And then she talking about some what's going on, what's going on. And I said, "Bitch, I'm fighting. What you mean? What's going on? Why you ain't swing on the bitch?" She said, "I got, I got a kid, but your ass ain't have a kid when you was running into a nigga car with your car, but." Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, girl. Okay. I just you I just, must have had no kid that day. I just I just never want to be so in love and obsessed with somebody where I'm out here looking crazy as fuck. You know what I mean? It's like uh, nose open. open. I don't okay. never want to be digmatized like that. I, I that ain't digmatized. Bitches just don't know what they're worth. Like I'm not, I'm but, not worth that. That's very no, ugly. that that is true. Like, a lot of people like don't know their worth. I don't know nothing about that lifestyle over there. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> much a princess. Yes, I'm very much a princess. <laughs> Why would a princess? be doing that shit. Now, yeah. I'm going to defend myself at all costs because bitch, I'm Xenon, the warrior princess. However, however, <laughs> I will not, I will not, I will not demote myself. I will not degrade myself. I will not, yeah. I won't even give a nigga the satisfaction to be like telling his friends, yeah, this crazy ass bitch tried to run into me. Da -da 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 -da. You will not never hear that. I think the most I ever did was hit a nigga with a mug. That's it. But I, cause I just, I'm like you. Do we want to pull up our podcast? Well, I, I pulled. I said I hit somebody with a mug. Mm -mm. When you had um, earthed off and you was following in. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Violence, violence. As far as like physical violence, just hitting somebody with a mug upside their head. That's it. But I did, I did, yeah. I I talked about that on here. I got an episode about that. The Great Maserati Chase is what it's called. Yes, <laughs> I chased that nigga down, and that fucking Maserati in the turn out to be my nigga. It's okay. I apologize, so I was accountable. I was accountable, and I apologize, child. But I'm just saying, like, I don't ever want to be that like feeling. Like, I don't want to feel like that. I feel like that's giving a nigga too much power. Mm -hmm. And I just and that was more so embarrassed because I had somebody with me and I didn't want to have egg on my face. And you still, almost chopped the girl leg off. I probably should have let her. I should have probably let her halfway fall off the car and chop that leg off because fuck that bitch. But uh, okay, anyway. so look, 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 Dom. What would you do if you didn't got it into it with your nigga, and then he goes to the other room and get him laugh and start talking shit about you? What would you do? Bitch, I am going to bust the windows <laughs> out his car. 
The car, I, I ain't going to the car. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. I'm 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 gonna be honest. I will probably I would probably knock him upside the head with a mug. I would probably be in jail for assault. But you I, know what? Honestly, honestly, I feel like thinking back and having friends and situations where it's gotten out of control and or landed them in jail. Excuse me. I'm kind of in the space of like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'm going to pack my shit and I'm going to go. Girl, one of these Capeline, um pants, um, a saw with a deadly weapon. Bitch, I would have gluck, gluck, gluck. I would have started clucking that nigga. Like, <laughs> that, bitch, <laughs> that bitch in Bad Girls Club, when she got them pants and was smacking them, that would have been his head and the motherfucking pan, bitch. What? And then I'm I'm straight going in the air. I'm straight on my um boondock shit. Me and her karate kick. I'm kicking the phone. All you were here was... That's all just, you were here. That's all the motherfucker would see on live. Wouldn't be no more talking. But you know what? The per the person that you're talking about, the person that you're talking about is kind of is unfortunate. That's fucked up. But that's what you and I'm not gonna no, say that's what no, you get. we ain't doing it. I ain't gonna say that's what you get. We ain't doing it because I all of that was orchestrated by all that. of that was orchestrated by the baby. He that was. Who, he the one who he the one who was backing up all of that bullshit. Mm -hmm. He was the one like. Well, we know niggas. We know niggas. We but know. however, this drunk ass bitch put put the drink down. <laughs> Clip that out too. Shut him. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not cutting it. I cut the clip. It's a like at 56, it was probably like 56, 25, maybe. Yeah. I just feel like we know this nigga, and we know niggas though. Niggas is always gonna need. That is one thing that's constant in life. Man, that, that like the niggas going to need. Okay. And I just feel like it's always so funny to me when we when we see these situations play out because they play out like this time and time again her it's situation the, wasn't no but the crazy part about her situation wasn't no different than summers it's no summers, different summers just transpired way quickly yes her, her and the baby been together for a while yeah summers was like a year and a half so we got to see it go by super quick or whatever but it's not no different. So the same way I feel for Summer, I definitely feel for Danny. Whether I like her or not. Right. It's just, I'm a woman. I've been there, sis. Like, pick your head up. You and that beautiful baby. Go get y'all somewhere to stay. And I wouldn't, that nigga would never have to dark my door up again. We got to go to court, bitch. Because there's no way in hell that a nigga that I have a baby by should be putting me and my baby out at three in the morning. And bitch, say, I'm not going nowhere until I feel like I'm safe. This is right. my home too. You, you, we're living together. Yeah. So, so you have to come get me and my shit. Yeah. To come hurt. And then I, you're you're trying to displace me. Yeah. Bitch, this where is FEMA at? Let me call them motherfuckers because I need some help. I'm in distress. You know, I'm the biggest white woman out here. And I'm not leaving. And that's why the police didn't remove her because that's her home too. She yeah. wasn't. A lot of bitches would have been in the comment like, you should just leave. You should just leave. But this is my home. Right. I'm not going nowhere until I feel like it. And see, people be fucked up because a lot of places, like if, if, she, if it was only a, a week or two weeks, they could have removed her. But it's be 30 days. And that 30 days be getting niggas all the time. They don't know the law. And you be trying to force people out. And you have to legally go through that process to get them evicted, to remove them from your home. It is a whole process. Yes. And I just and I ain't going nowhere. I just feel like this. This is a out an age old lesson. Them bitches told Summer. Them bitches told Danny. I wish them bitches would have told me. I didn't know you then. 
<laughs> no, let me tell you. Okay, so look, I'll tell you. I'll give you a quick story, super quick. And you talk about you not hearing the sad same story over and over again. I'm that friend. I don't want to keep hearing it. Naya, if you kept telling me something over and over again, you got so many times where I'm going to say, hey, all right. No, no, definitely. Up. I'm talking and, about I wish his exes would have told me something. Would A little birdie would have came and sat on my shoulder and told me something because I am very much that girl. Like, I don't, um, like, I don't discount what a woman got to say. Because right. like I said, whether I like you, whether I like Danny or not, because we know I went left on her on the other show. Whether I like Danny or not, I can empathize with you because I'm a woman. Right. And right, I've been right. in that same place. I felt that felt I felt that pain. I feel like, you know, shit, I wanted to go lay my ass out on 270 just right now. Just this just end it. So Nigga, what? <laughs> One of my friends had went through a breakup and she was like, bitch, I just want to go lay out on 270. I said, that's a very accurate thing. When you go on through a breakup, you just be like, yeah. sometimes your heart just feel like it's in your toes, bitch, and it just be so heavy you can't pick it up. Like, I've been there, so I know how that pain feel. And I've been through my girls and they go through their breakups and it, I feel the pain. It, it hurt me. My damn heart be in my motherfucking toes and I'm in love. Yeah. So, I never discount what another woman got to say about a man, especially a woman that used to fuck with him. Yeah, no. That, so, that, anytime a bitch ever came to me about a nigga, I always kept that like, yeah, let me watch. In your back pocket. Yes, what this nigga, yeah. I'm, now I'm looking harder. Yeah. Because I'm for not me, no hating ass bitch. For me, I, I feel like I've never, the only time... A chick has ever confronted me or brought some information to me was once in my life. And I was, I honestly, and at that point, I was so far removed emotionally from that relationship anyway. And I was like, I'm moving to LA. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just, I just, and it's always strange because they always say, oh, love a man that loves you more than you love him. And you know, I don't, don't love I don't, none of these niggas. It's the rule, the key to success. And I think, I think a lot of times um, we get caught up on what society timeline and what they tell us that where we should be as far as love, relationships, career, all of that. Mm -hmm. And when we and we force things to happen that might not necessarily be a part of our that's our story and that's how we get fucked up and a lot of times and i've said this before people be watching the previews and it'd be a fucked up ass preview and you still don't take your ass to the fucking movies that's weird and i just i just people want it to work just like some people were saying like shit i'm yeah. in it now so i want to i want to do as much as i can to make it work like yeah you I actually just, even like even even listening to how that man expresses his feelings towards his exes is mm -hmm. something you have to look out for. Yep. That's something you have to look out for because sometimes they be telling you right in your motherfucking face and you don't even know. Yeah. Because I feel like even though I, I very much wish that my exes would feel pain, you really can't say I did nothing to you. Right. Until after you fucked, up, fucked me over. Right, right. So if this nigga and this bitch here talking about, oh, she this and she that and she that, red flag, how them bitches on Instagram, it's a red flag. Yep. It's a red flag because I am not one of them. I'm good to you until you're not good to me. No, then, that's real. Then it's a Travis Scott festival, bitch. So, yeah. Too soon. <laughs> no, but, that, but you know what? Good. A lot of times, I, you know, my mom... My mom will always say, you know, uh, listen with your eyes and your ears and your legs and your mouth closed because everything yeah. that you want to know. And heart closed the heart up too, bitch, because that yeah, bitch you right, be you leaving right. you astray too. And, um, and that'll tell you all that you need to know about somebody. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people too also put on a, a front. Some people... And it's weird because we all, when we all are starting to know people, you know, you are, you, 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 yeah, you want to be your true self, but 
some people put on a front and they never, they're never their true facing self until like a couple of months in. And then it could be a couple like, of years, Motherfucker a couple of years in it. But that just be angry weird. black woman shit. It just be weird to me. I'm like, how could you keep this facade on for so fucking long? They but be it, real life weirdos. It's real life weirdos where it, yeah. a flip will switch and then it's like summer walk a reference. You don't know me and I don't know you, bitch. Yeah. Cause this ain't the person that I've been sleeping next to all this time, or yeah. I we just spent countless there hours is a on the phone. Stranger in my house, girl. It let's took talk a while to figure out. Let's talk There's about it. no way you can be who you say you are. You gotta be someone else. And I just, I, I mean, I, I, I think we all have been through that t- particular situation. And I always, w- when things are happening, I'm a very protective friend. And when I see shit, I'm like, okay, I'm not in it. So I don't know, but I, what I know is what you're telling me. And you're, you never tell me anything good. If you never tell me anything good, that's a, that's a problem. And mm-hmm. you might be low key a problem because you like that shit. It's some people that just really enjoy mess. Yeah. They enjoy being miserable and that's okay too, but that's not my steez. So it, it is my job as your friend to look out for you and give you the best advice that I well, can. We can't to help be you. friends, boo. We can't. I'm not gonna keep going through that back and forth, having that conversation. I'm so with much you. of a. I'm. I be so connected to my friends. Like now, you upset. Now I'm upset, bitch. Yeah. Now I'm real. Up all night with your ass because I can't sleep, and I can't live my life like that. So yeah. I got to ask you out. No, and that's where I, I and every time I, I see the nigga, I got beef with the nigga. Yeah, he my beef. It is really not. I've been in situations where I literally I have removed myself from friends because of their dating life. And I'm like, hey, I love you. I wish you well, but right now, this ain't working for me, and I gotta I gotta dip. And people don't get it, and people say, Oh, that's really no, it's not. I'm not going to have the same. Co- that's beating a dead horse, and that's putting trauma on me that I don't need. <laughs> so I, I, I will gladly move. And there was, and I, I told y'all, even with a former best friend that had been my friend since preschool, twenty something years down the drain. Yeah, I wish her well in life. I wish what? her well in life, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I do like about Danny because one of the reasons why I didn't like Danny because I thought she I thought she should have been said something. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she's been pretty quiet. Like she haven't really said nothing or like went toe-to-toe with the other baby mamas riff riff. Yeah. They kind of like sneak this once or twice or whatever. But yeah, generally this whole time she's been quiet about their relationship. Honestly, yeah. knew they was together because the niggas was making songs about he with a little jiggy bitch and you the little jiggy bitch. So yeah. um I like that she was able to stand up for herself and have her voice. Yeah. And but he's clearly given narcissists. If you ever dated a narcissist, that's the nigga. That's yeah. him right there with a red nose. And he's just weird and lame and he do uh, he's we see it time and time again like he did his first like mama like that yeah like but that's not- a, that is a preview so i i think we get in these spaces as women and i'm not faulting her i'm saying a general statement we think that we be special and we can change these niggas or not and- even that sometimes you just be like well maybe he's wrong because sometimes, you know, True. A, bi- a bitch can have a shitty experience just because that nigga wasn't there yet. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And, you know, so I, I said all the time, my father is a testament of that. He was just not there yet for yeah. those other women and those other children. And it is very unfortunate. But my daddy is a superhero to me. Yeah. And, I mean... My mama caught the right nigga at the right damn time. He just happened to be over 40. That's that's the yeah. fucked up part about it. Like that's what the niggas baby. a lot of times grow up though. It takes them and, a long or not. ass time. Yeah, I mean, I look at I feel like men have a very one-track mind. 
people say, oh, you made time for, no, no, no. I'm like, men, if, they, if there's a goal and this is something they want or whatever, everything else is just like for play play for them. They don't take it seriously. And I think they bury, and, and that's not giving them niggas a pass. And I, when I think about women, I think about how multi- faceted we are we so, yeah, so and, and we have to we it's so many layers to us and we are taught at an early age how we have to do this we got to do that we got to do that and men really not taught that and that's not nobody fault but but you they know, raggy ass bald headed ass mammy yeah and so they see them they see women do everything they did they daddies be in and out and it's just it's just a fucked up ass situation because we all been you know I don't know if you've been in situations but we all been in situations where we like okay is this nigga gonna figure this out um when is he gonna realize how you know how dope or great I am is this nigga ever gonna grow up like I look at I look at like I'm cool with all my exes for the most part I'm gonna be honest because I'm like we ain't never really had no bad breakup it ain't no bad blood shit just don't fucking work out. But I see some of them, like some of them, I'm like, okay, you grew up, you did what you're supposed to do, you got married, blah, 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 blah. But then in some of them, I just be like, nigga, we about to be 35. Like that, like that one, one meme where Teddy's like, you 36. I be feeling like that about some niggas. And I'm like, grow the well, fuck up. up. Yeah. When you gonna grow up, why are you still doing the same dumb shit? And I just don't say that. That's like that's not my headache. And I just yeah, chuckle. niggas be children. They be very childlike. And sometimes you think you've grown, and sometimes you just think you're the one. Like you just mm -hmm. said, maybe, maybe. So it's like shit. It really be like tossing the dice to know if this, if you're actually really special, or if this nigga is just putting on a facade for you. Yeah. And it's very, very like irritating. And it's very fucking confusing because I rather nigga be like a nigga. A nigga came to me last night and was like, "Yeah, um, the reason why, you know, I haven't been like communicating as much to you." He was like, "Initially, I liked you when I first met you or whatever, but I was in a situation, so mm -hmm. I was I I was kind of removing myself. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know, we never kissed. We have like." You know, he ain't ever felt on me or nothing like that. Or right. he just always took me out on dates. He didn't. He didn't flew me out plenty of times. I'm like, shit, nigga, take me on some dates, shit. Yeah, he didn't took me out on dates. Flew me out plenty of times. We never had anything sexual. He never even much as rubbed on my booty. Okay. But he was like, I'm just the type of person like I like being physical with, with one person at a time. And he was yeah. like, I was still physical with that girl, even though we was going through a breakup. And he was like, I shouldn't have been kept kept on being in it. But, you know, like, shit, niggas go through that when they don't be wanting to walk away, too. Yeah. And he's a very sweet person. And he was just like, I had put so much into, the, like, money and resources and all of this. Like, I just didn't want to walk away from the situation. And my feelings was hurt and all of this. So he was like, I was going with you. And he was like, I was in, enjoying your company. However, yeah. like, I still had this shit going on. And I just wish it would be more niggas like that. Because I already knew you had something going on. Because I already know, like, right. how, a, how a nigga act when Acts, he, like, yep, yep. laser vision Fully on you. Invested, the nigga's gonna yep. call you every day. He yep. gonna check on you every day. Yep. He doing shit. Now, he, he will be calling me. But, shit, I'll talk to him, like, once a week. Yeah. No, that's real. And and then niggas think bitches be dumb. And it's just like, but y'all, well, I tell you all the time, I tell you, I said, I like full transparency. So I know where I stand and how I'm going to navigate. Take it. This I thing. ain't no weak ass bitch. The, and that's know. how I feel. And people are like, do you really want, I'm like, yes, I do. Because I'm like, am I going to be fucking with you and fucking with somebody else? And when I mean fucking with somebody else, I don't mean necessarily Having fucking sex. them. Yeah. I mean like, Talking, talking to somebody, I'm I'm laughing I'm gonna, at his joke. Right, I'm gonna go out. If when he called to say get dressed, I'm going. Or is this something that's exclusive? What you doing? Are you dating intentionally? Are you trying to be married? You know, and if you're not, that's not where you at. Then say that shit. Don't waste my fucking time. Yeah. I I told y'all. I'm like I used to. Oh well, y'all, I dated this fine ass Portuguese dude. That nigga didn't want kids. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, and I was like, why the fuck was I going to waste his time 
knowing that I at least wanted one of them big head motherfuckers. At least one. At least one. He didn't, and he was 40 something at the time, and I was in my late 20s. Right. He wasn't changing his mind. He been there, done it. He been, yeah. di- been dying. Well, he ain't, he, he ain't even been there. He was just like, why can't you just love my niece and nephew? Right. He done died this is for 40 some years. He yeah. So I'm like, I'm cool. But I I love you. I like, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, nigga, that's cool. Thank you. Right. Well, I'm just here to have a good time. I'm gonna I'm go home. A good time, not I'm a here. long time, baby. It exactly. And I'm like, I'm gonna take a nap after we fucking, and I'm going home. I'm not staying the night. Girl, I would have cuddled with that man and cuddled. I went home. I took, I, I took a, I took a 15, 20 minute power nap, and I would go home. Mm-mm, I would cuddle some money right in my nah, pocket, girl. I because cuddling, it. cuddling confuses shit. I ain't got time. Cause Ooh, then you start pillow talking and saying shit that I can give two. It's giving very much Aries and it's irking me. Oh my god! <laughs> it's irking me. Oh my god! Do you have any Aries placements? Uh, let me. I'm looking on my co-star real quick. I don't know. Is your Aries in Venus? Is your Venus in Aries? <laughs> Why well, my friend got a uh, bitch? Venus. My Mars is in Aries. I knew it was something going on. But you know, my, my moon and my rising are in a uh, Leo, though. My Pluto Ooh. is in Scorpio. Yeah, I'm a Leo moon, too. Yeah, and then um, shit, I got like, I'm surprised it's not more air in my chart. I just be feeling so airy. The only thing that's air in my fucking chart is my sun. See, I'm mostly, most of my chart is like Leo to and Libra. Co-star. Yeah, I, my Venus is in Leo, and it makes very much all the sense. My yeah, my Venus, why love, bitch, why my I Venus love. is in Capricorn. That sucks. That really sucks. I still hate them hoes though. This is really ass. They are very terrible people. Very much. Uh, so. Sorry, little sister. Oh, that's what uh the baby is. The baby is a Capricorn. Makes sense. Very, but see, because I feel like Capricorn people are very, very, very calculated. Regardless of how you, and they fucking liars. They lie. They lie all the time. And then when you call them, shift the goalpost to fit. Yep. Their narrative and this ass. I I fell out with a a couple of Capricorns, um, and one of them was talking shit about me to one of my other friends who is a Libra. And you know, she told me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we doing that. So let's talk about it. This mm-hmm. bitch drove an hour and a half to LA, maybe longer. This is during COVID. So maybe an hour and a half. We had a beach day. I didn't invite that bitch. They invited her. Uh, yeah, you told me the story. <laughs> but I told you how I literally, I conf- I'm like, okay, so you were talking about me. What is it that you don't like? What do I do that you don't? Does it make you like the way that I move? Never acknowledged it. Then the next day, when she sent the apology, I bought it to her again. Never addressed it. I'm like, I can't fuck with people like that. No accountability. No nothing. Cause I'm like, I'm the type of person. I'm like, okay, well maybe if it's a character flaw on my end, maybe I could ask a couple of people and see if that's something that I really need to work on. Mm-hmm. But if you can't even acknowledge that. Now, sis, fuck you. You don't you don't like the way that I move, which is like I don't give a fuck attitude. I don't let shit really try to sit with me too long. Cause mm-hmm. I know how my energy is. I know that I'm a high impact person and I know that I'm a like when my friends tell me shit, I absorb that shit like a sponge. I don't always want to feel like that. Yeah. That's not good for my mental state. So I'm like, ah, I'm not fuck you. but you know, hey, whatever. That Indeed. that Marge and Aries is very problematic. What? <laughs> what do co-star say about it? Because it's it's on my brain now. What do oh say? my gosh. It says <sighs> Mars is the planet of aggression. Mm-hmm. It determines how you assert yourself, take action, and the energy that surrounds you, particularly in your sex life, your ambition, ambitiousness. Uh, and when you're angry, your Mars is in Aries, meaning that you assert yourself in a way to the point 
uh, to the point and is impulsive. I do feel like at points in my life, I am very impulsive. But I always looked at that as air because I feel like air signs be we hella impulsive. No, see, no. You love to make things happen. Air signs and you duality, push- but we, we're not necessarily impulsive. Aquariuses are. I'm hella, and yeah, I'm on, I tell you, I'm, I'm hella impulsive. So but like, I'm you, not. But yeah. it's all, it, but that's the duality of it. Like it's either one way or the other. Right. Um, you love to make things happen. You push things forward with energy and enthusiasm. You have a short temper, but are quick to forgive. The bravest sign of the zodiac. It's in your ninth house, meaning you put a lot of energy into philosophy, faith, education, and politics. That makes sense about me. That's real. Um, am I short tempered? I'm not going to say I'm short tempered. I just don't like being pushed. No. By the time you, it, Naya, when you see me mad, something has happened and it has taken me over the edge. I I feel like I'm very forgiving, but I don't forget. Bye, Nene Nigga. Leaks. Bye, Nene Leaks. Stop calling me that. <laughs> I'm not calling you that because of the hair color. I'm calling you because you clicked out of. <laughs> You hurt my feelings. You were not listening to me. And you kept cutting me off. And I was just trying to get through. And I'm like, why is this happening to me in the Libra? Because I don't know Naya in real life yet. And she's supposed to be my friend and on my side. So I felt like yeah, you on the and I said I felt me. I felt back into the corner and I was like, okay, so you're not gonna let me talk? Fuck this shit. So that's how I felt. And now look at us. I'm like, I feel so connected to you. That's great. You just had to work out the kinks in our friendship. That's cool. I love you. I do. I do. I was like, oh my gosh, I really, really like Naya. She is fucking hilarious. And she say all this shit that I be thinking and it's just fucking funny. Yeah. I I don't know where we went wrong with that one, but I can't say that I, I knew it was an Aries placement and the fact that it's Mars <sighs> makes all the sense. Makes all the sense. Because you feel like a terrible person I, now. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, you know what? Aries men are supposed to be very compatible to me because that's my sister sign. So they're kind of like the exact opposite. I'm not impulsive, and they are very impulsive. And I'm I'm like um scared of confrontation, and they're very confrontational. I'm, okay, yeah. so I'll be telling my sister that, like, I don't think my sister is impulsive. She's an Aries. Aggressive. Yes. And kind of confrontational. Yeah. And I remember when we drove home, I said, Janelle, don't say anything that's going to make me mad. Because <laughs> she's like, what? I was like, I don't want to be mad on this road trip home. I just I just want us to bond and have a really good time. Because it was really, I'm going to be honest, I'll be transparent. It was really hard for me for my sister to move home. Because we. I feel like we wasn't that close going up. Even mm-hmm. though we are only three years apart, and we got really close when we moved away, like we had mm-hmm. highs and low, you know, moments living it, growing up together. But I felt like we got really close. Like I would talk to my sister every day. I don't talk to her every day anymore, and that's weird to me. That is fucking weird, and I hate it. And I just, I told her, I was like, I just called to check on you to make sure you're okay. You don't talk. You don't call me, but it's okay. I know that the time zone. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> this is man. You sounded like my mama. <laughs> is it? Because when you get used to certain things, like, or, you know, you talking to your sister about your day or some bullshit that happened. She telling me some bullshit that happened. So, or we just laughing about a show. So, yeah. I told her, because she currently sent her, like, best friend house. I said, hey, when I can't get a hold of you, I'm going to start fucking calling her. Because this yeah, shit. I would If I'm best friend, block her. <laughs> Because <laughs> she do not need to be calling you. Look, we I, I did put this all in a group chat. We talk about married at first sight. So, yeah. I would not participate. I would be quiet as a motherfucker. Girl, the show. No, because married at first sight is that messy. You will be talking. You should. <gasps> you should watch this last season. Married at first sight. It's I so do funny. not need to commit to another show. I'm already behind. I don't oh, even watch what? TV like that. 
That's I watch basketball because we back in you know the season, mm-hmm. but I look forward to my Wednesdays to watch Married at First Sight. What is that on Netflix or something? It's on the Lifetime app. Girl, but, I ain't finna subscribe to that. Uh-uh. I gotta see if I can find it on my Fire Stick somewhere. You probably can find it on your Fire Stick, but I'm telling you, all you gotta do is watch the last two seasons. These two seasons alone will make you go back and watch. Not all the last the two. I you started watching me on a binge and not doing my work. Jesus. That's okay. Uh, cause you got like 50 11 jobs, so somewhere else is gonna pay you, so it don't matter. You gonna get paid. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> well, Naya, what are we gonna take away from this Danny Lay situation? Which is also still strange that she calls herself Danny Danny Lay. I thought Danny Lay was her name. It's this Danielle. Danny Lay. Yeah, Lay it's like name. Danielle. Um cruel cruel or something like that i don't know i don't know what her middle name is her middle name might be that ashley or something or just lee mm. yeah maybe uh um, what, what, what are we gonna do and what are we not gonna do in this situation going forward what is the advice what we're gonna the take away from this is y'all bitches need to stop being these niggas peace be they pain they understand it you know what I can take that. Yeah. That's all y'all need to take away from it. Stop being these niggas peace and be they pain. They gonna feel that. That's all. I hate you. <laughs> I bet, look, I was my baby daddy pain. He still here. He, he uh, drink my uh, um bath water. Like, I was gonna say your pee like that girl on the stage. I don't know. Oof. <laughs> what is the world coming to lord people are strange man people are strange that's all i got yeah. that's all i got people are strange uh i'm gonna say you know everybody ain't worth fucking i think people gotta remember and they not when you really nigga really think about it if bitches really knew they worth I don't even know why anybody would fuck his ass. He's five two, and his head is bigger than a motherfucker. Somebody was like, she should have hit him upside the head with a can of beans, and hoped that the can had busted, so he had bean juice all over the back of his head and neck. I was hollering. Then the baby looked just like him. (laughs) I I said, "Girl, oh, uh, this is another layer of bullshit that I didn't like." And we can end talking about this bitch, the baby. Why is it our first introduction to how you're you even acknowledging your child at all? Why is this the world's introduction to you acknowledging your child for the first time? Yep. You putting your child and your child's mother out of your yep. home. Yep. That's very, very sick. Before this, you never acknowledged your child. You never acknowledged her pregnancy. Yep. You never acknowledged anything. And to see all of this bullshit, y'all done took motherfucking family pictures with matching motherfucking sweaters on, bitch, and you done had her out in motherfucking tropics and you rubbing on her belly and kissing her and then all of this shit. I, that, that's another reason why that bitch should have just karate kicked that phone and clocked his ass over the head with a motherfucking pan. Because you, you a weird ass bitch on yeah. all levels. Like, we met Drake, uh, son, Cause a motherfucking bitch ass nigga snitch, but it wasn't oh. on no negative ass shit. Like yeah. on the account, like oh yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna put put the mammy out. Like right. this is weird. It's very weird. And then you on live with the baby. Now you got my baby in your arms on live talking shit about me, bitch. If you don't give me my motherfucking baby, yeah. But I digress because that's I just that's say you know. Out. It's a lot of people out here moving through life as condola. Y'all got to stop having babies by these niggas that y'all don't know. And even niggas that y'all know that ain't worthy of you having a lifetime connection with them on that level. Fuck them and let them go. Take a plan B, get an abortion. Take birth control, whatever the thing, whatever your jam is. Hey. And get up out of there. And get up out of there. Because 
Y'all be putting these kids in compromising ass, dramatic ass situations that they didn't ask to be in. They didn't ask to be here. So do better. Do better. Love on yourself. Then let a nigga love on you. How trifling. How trifling. That's... It is. It's really fucking trifling. And that really shit brought, just brought me back because I was ranting this, this, uh, I was ranting like at lunchtime about that with my homegirl Kena. And I was like, you are a trifling ass bitch, and you would have been every bitch in the book. Your mammy, where your mammy yeah. is, where the mammy. So I yeah. can, so I can read her her rights like Summer Walker. Um, no, like and and, and it's just like you know, we always and, and, and women, if y'all have boys, y'all, y'all sons, whatever, gender non perform, whatever, stop coddling these niggas like this get them a mentor if they uh, you gotta hopefully you have an uncle a grandpappy somebody around if they biological father is not around to help you raise that kid because i got a whole bunch of homeboys whose daddies was absent and them niggas turned out fine but they also it's had fine. people and they good daddies and they great daddies a lot of them i got a whole episode about it and <laughs> i just feel like don't be coddling don't be these niggas is not y'all boyfriends. They're not y'all husbands. So stop treating leave them like King that. Leave the fuck alone so he can live his life. Please. Because it's going to be some bitch, like dumb bitch, that's going to get his dumb ass and keep this cycle going. Stop being stupid. Stop having babies by these dumb people and then latching on to your goddamn kids because you shouldn't have had a baby by this dumb, big head ass, ugly ass motherfucker. I'm sick of seeing this shit. This nigga woke up on a Monday and just chose violence. This shit gonna be on our news feed all goddamn week. I'm gonna have to meet the mute the fucking gossip blogs on my timeline. I see this shit. Keep on sending me that shit. <laughs> Cause I'm fully invested now. Uh, At this I, point, Danielle, Curiel, whatever your name is, that's my cousin. And I'm and I'm gonna stick beside her. Okay, so look, I I had commented on a post that Bot Alert had made saying that Alyssa Milano had like I think she had like two or three abortions, like back in the day. Mm -hmm. And she said when she had had a miscarriage, she thought it was karma. So I was just like, how many abortions? I'm like, girl, it's called birth control. So a bitch gonna at me. And say, it's always some judgy bitch up in here that got something to say or whatever. Woo -to -woo -to -woo. I'm like, um, I also know how pregnancy works. And it take that one time and your ass is fertile for the rest of your motherfucking life until you don't have a period no more. So you take the extra steps and precautions to not be in Planned Parenthood or the Hope Clinic every so fucking often getting a fucking abortion. And she was just like, you you were judging her. Da, da, da. I said, well, the moment she told whatever magazine what the fuck happened, that became my business because she put it on a public platform. So, yes, this is now my place and space to comment on this shit. What the fuck? Just saying. I mean, yeah, you push it out there on the internet. We got to talk about it. It's our business now. It so. is our business. This is our business. But whatever bitch want to do with her body, cool. If you want to have all them abortions, cool. I support it. Whatever. It ain't got shit to do with me and my coochie. Um, yeah. Where can they find you on the social media? Um, Y'all can find me. This is my Mexican page. Anaya um, Fuentes. Naya dot Fuentes on IG and it's just Naya Fuentes on Twitter and don't hit me up on Facebook because I don't be on there no more. It's in the ghetto. And um TikTok Naya Fuentes and um YouTube just Naya J U S T N Y A. I can't. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. I will have Naya more often because she is just a good time. Uh Hollows by some candles. Trying to figure out my promo for Black Friday. Yeah, give me some, cause that's what bitch is getting. Um, for they some somebody getting some candles. Okay. Uh, yeah, I gotta figure it out, and I gotta go pick up these other jars. Fucking supply chain. Fix this shit, y'all. Take them fucking boats off the fucking 
off a of sea in Long Beach. I'm sick of this shit. I need my jars. So, yeah, y'all. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a great time. I hope you enjoyed our investigative report and us talking shit about these hoes. I'll see y'all here next week. Bye.